Hello students, it's your professor Dr. Mink and I'm creating this video to help you visualize and understand the implementation of an abstract data type, a stack. And the program that I have loaded in the LC3 simulator, which will really help us from a visualization standpoint, is the push pop demo, which I've placed in this week's um, module in Canvas. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to I'm going to start by running this program, and we're going to step into and step over some basic routines. What this program does is it accepts it accepts three types of input from the user. An X exits the program. A D pops and displays the value at the top of the stack. And it supports one, two, or three digit integer input. And so it's the number of digits is terminated by the enter key, which is a hex one zero. I believe that's a, anyway, it's the value is zero. I'm sorry, 10. Um, we'll take a look at it in a few minutes. So, and that pushes the value onto the stack, which is what we really want to see. This implementation does support overflow and underflow error detection. So, here I have the program, the object file for this program loaded into the simulator. And I'm going to step uh, over or step into some components just so you can get a feel for how this works. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load the address of the stack base, which is stored using the fill command into the uh, into R6. Okay. And then we're going to load the address of a string Z prompt message into R0. And then we'll execute. I'm going to step over the puts because we've already covered that in depth. And we get this um, standard um, output message. And then I'm going to execute a get C. <clears throat> we see polling. And I'll enter. Um, I'll enter an eight. Okay. Uh, trap out will um, output that or echo it to the screen. And then we go through this section called test. And we're comparing the value in R0 uh, to a negative X, the negative value of the character X, the ASCII character X. Um, and then if it is an X, we, we branch to exit, we can we can we compare it to negative C, which is a clear. I didn't go over that, but this does clear the stack. Um, or a negative D, and D is a, is stands for display, and it will pop the top value off of the stack and and output it um, to the uh, console. And otherwise, if none of those if the character just entered doesn't match an X, a C, a D, we go into this routine called push value, which is an unconditional branch. So we can watch this. And obviously, it's not going to match any of those. So here we go. We're going to go to push value. OK. And then push value will load a value from the ASCII buffer into R1, okay, and it will add, um, it will load a value called max digits into R2, which is three. That's how many digits this will take. And then we will go into this value loop that will basically continue to ask us, and I'll step into this, will continue to ask us for. Uh, additional input. 
Okay, so now we're in get C again. Uh, I'm going to just hit enter. I'm not going to go into three digit. Okay, we'll echo that and you'll see now we're echoing the uh, enter, which is a, uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's a hex A, which is decimal 10. Sorry, I'm not good at remembering ASCII values. So, and then we'll go back up to value loop and we will determine whether it's good input and the fact that it is a, um, a carriage return, we will then um, jump down here. We will, uh, we will JSR ask you to binary. So you're going to see the value we entered. Okay, convert it to its decimal equivalent and then placed back into R0. And then we are going to jump to the subroutine push. Now I'll step into the push. Okay, so here we are in the push. We're saving R1. We're loading the address of stack max. <clears throat> this is for overflow detection. Stack max into R1. Okay, this um, the top of the stack is 30BB. So um, we will then get the negative of the value in R1. We will add uh, R1 to R6. And if it were 0, that would mean that we were at stack max and we would branch to overflow, which we're not doing because we're not at overflow. We're pushing the first value on this. So we're not going to take that branch. We will add negative 1 to 6, R6, because remember, the stack grows negatively or towards 0. So we're moving the stack pointer to negative because we didn't get overflow, which means we can push this value onto the stack. Now we will store the value in R0 at the value of R6 with an offset of zero. This is the actual push, okay? So at this point in time, and then we're gonna go BRNZP, success exit, and we will um, basically begin over. So um, uh, we'll restore R1 and we'll hit our return. And now we're back into a new command. Now, at this point in time, I want to stop and I want to save memory contents. I'm going to call this memory.txt and I'll write it. And I believe I should have memory.txt right here. Okay. So now let's go down. Thankfully, the LC3 simulator outputs all of the labels. This would be very difficult to locate these values without the labels. Um, here we go. So here is our stack base. Okay, R6 equaled the stack base when we started. We subtracted one. When we determined we were not at overflow, we compared R6 to stack max, and it wasn't zero. We su actually subtracted um, the value in R6. We did the negative, um, flipped the bits at one, subtracted from stack max, and determined we were not, we did not get a zero from that subtraction. So we were not at stack max. So then we subtracted one from the value in R6. We moved the pointer and we pushed. There's the value we pushed onto the stack. And we can, so we can see the capacity of the stack is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This stack is, has a capacity to hold nine integers. Okay. I don't want these videos to be too long to lose your attention. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop this video and I'll start a second video when we go into pop. Okay. Thanks for watching. Of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. And I really suggest that
that you um, get this code from Canvas, load it into the simulator, assemble it, load it into the simulator, and do some push pop um, simulations. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.